Hey everyone, welcome to another video on the use of punctuation marks. I have already made a video on the use of punctuation mark which include full stop and commas, while the rest of the punctuation marks we are going to cover in this video. And if you haven't checked that video, the link is in the description itself. So go ahead and watch that out to continue this video. So in today's video, we will begin with the use of semicolon. Semicolon is represented as comma having a dot over it. And it functions to mark a somewhat longer pause than that is denoted by comma. So we can say, Semicolon represents a pause of greater importance than that shown by comma. So the first use of semicolon is to separate the coordinate clause if they are joined by conjunctions as and, but, for, or, either, neither, therefore, else, otherwise. Understand this in a better way in this example. I have no money. Therefore, I cannot afford servant. Look, I have no money is a clause, which is complete in itself. And we can also put full stop here to mark the end of the sentence. But over here, it is having additional information attached to it, stating, Therefore, I cannot afford servant. So it says, I have no money, semicolon, that is pause for a while and then say, Therefore, I cannot afford servant. Next, semicolon is used to separate lengthy coordinate clause where the coordinate conjunction is omitted. For example, the rain fall in torrents, the sky was dark, the road was deep in mud, the way was long, the weary travels plodded on in silence. Now, simply because it's massively long, the sentence is separated into clauses with the support of semicolon. Third, to separate a series of loosely related clauses. Loosely in the sense the one which won't stand in itself, when uttered alone and requires support to make it clear. Like, today we loan what tomorrow we hate, today we seek what tomorrow we shun, today we desire what tomorrow we fear. Now, when we speak these clauses in this sentence separately, like for example, today we loan what tomorrow we hate, this sentence cannot stand itself, so it requires support of semicolon to add more information to its meaning. Now, here comes colon. Colon is a short of more complete pause than that of semicolon, while it may be a shorter pause than a full stop. If we look at it is often used with the dash. Likewise, to introduce a quotation or speech, colon is used, like Bacon says, Reading makes a full man, writing an exact man, speaking a ready man. Here observe how colon is acting as breach between who said it and what is being said. Then, colon is used before enumerations, examples and explanation. Like, the principal parts of a verb in English are the present tense, the past tense and the future tense. Now, here is a trick to use it. Remember that colon is often used before something that is divided. As in this diagram, the principal parts of a verb in English are divided into present, past and future. And before this division, these three are separated by colon. So, recollect this diagram before you use colon. Further, colon separates two statements. When one is used to explain something in connection with the other. As, I can't eat the bread, it is burnt black. Note this separation due to colon. And here comes the punctuation mark favorite of any exam paper setter, that is, note of interrogation or the question mark. And it is used directly after a direct question, as, what are you doing? Have you written your exercise? Or will you please lend me your watch? Etc. 
Now in a fun way go and make your friend mad by asking them questions. Next is note of exclamation. Exclamation is used after words which express anger, surprise, joy, sorrow or any other sudden emotion as oh dear or what a terrible fire this is. Now you may think that the sentence has what in it and therefore qualifies to become a question but it is not the case as it is a form of sudden expression describing what a terrible fire this is so now research more and find more exclamation like this the inverted commas inverted commas are used to enclose the exact word of a speaker or a quotation and this inverted comma are of two type one are the double inverted commas as here i shall give you some wool to make a new dress said the wild lamb to the little girl and there are single inverted commas used generally when a quotation is inserted within another quotation like he said to me i correctly understood his remark what cannot be cured can be endured here what cannot be cured can be endured is the quote within quote now the apostrophe apostrophe is used to show the omission of letter or letters like we can write do not as don't which has apostrophe to separate t while the meaning is conserved to the same likewise i have can be written as i apostrophe ve and though instead of though then apostrophe is used as a sign in the possessive case like shalu's book boy's hostel mala's hanky etc and lastly it is used to form the plural of the letters and figures as dot your i's and cross your t's means it is saying to add a dot on i and mark the cross line on t then comes hyphen hyphen is a shorter line than the dash it is used to connect the parts of a compound word as father in law man of war jack of all trades etc it is also used to form compound beginnings with a few prefixes as x co self wise none to give example we have ex minister cooperate self control etc next it is used to form compound fractions and compound numericals as 3/4 23 and many more dash dash indicates the abrupt stop or change of thought like if my husband were alive but why lament the past yet the sentence was used to speak more about husband it was to be continued but it was disrupted in between and there is a change of sentence which has occurred with the use of dash in between it is also used to resume a scattered subject like friends companion relatives all deserted him in this sentence friends companion and relatives were scattered but they are together dragged and brought into meaningful sentence with the use of dash followed by all now the brackets or parentheses this refers to separate the main part of the sentence a phrase or clause which does not grammatically belong to it for example he gained from heaven it was all he wished a friend this sentence can be said as he gained from heaven a friend but to add more crux to the said thing it was all he wished is additionally adding thought though it is not required but to add more meaning to what we are saying we can mention the not necessary thing with the help of bracket or there is another way double dashes are used instead of bracket now take for example I can write the same sentence as he gained from heaven dash it was all he wished dash a friend 
last but most important punctuation marks are capital letters it is used to begin a sentence like take this line in itself the i of it is capital then capital letters are used to begin each fresh line in a poetry it is as shown here or to begin all proper nouns and adjectives derived from them like dali afrika rohan etc we use capital letters for all nouns and pronouns which indicate the deity for example the lord he is a god the l of lord and g of god is capital to write the pronoun i and the interjection o we write them in capital letter then to begin first word of speech within the inverted comma we use capital letter like he said love one another as brother notice l of love is capital here the names of months days seasons titles of books name of places public instructions all important words in heading use capital letter even the names of community political parties historical events brand names high ranking officials are denoted with the capital itself and here are the bundle of examples to this so i hope you enjoyed the two videos made on the use of punctuation marks if you haven't seen the first The link is in the description. I thank you for patiently listening till the end. See you in the next one and do let me know in the comment if you like this video.